everybody. Thank you so much for coming on today. You're watching the Integrate Yourself podcast with Allison and Maya. Today, we're speaking with Amanda Spicer, who is owner and operator of Pranic Forest, a small batch artesian apothecary company focused on chemical free natural products. She calls herself a master herbalist, aromatherapist, intuitive energy channel, cosmopol I can't ever say this word, cosmetologist, <laughs> and artist. And she offers education about the practice of safe, holistic beauty, herbal medicine, and energy wellness. Uh, she's located in the Rocky Mountains of Calgary and Alberta, Cal Canada, is where, you're, where you kind of in two places, or? Yeah. yeah so um, actually, yeah, so I'm in the province of Alberta, but I also spend about 13 weeks a year in British Columbia on Lake Okanagan, and I often head out to Salt Spring Island on the coast. Cool. So, uh, so Western Canada, originally hailing from Eastern Canada from the province of Quebec, just along the Vermont border, about 20 minutes to the American border. Uh, I definitely am multilingual. Um, and everything kind of really got started for me in Quebec when I was really young. Well, you want to start there and uh, yeah. talk about how you got into this. And I just wanted to share that uh, Amanda is, she she shares a lot on her Instagram too. And she's uh, under Pranic Forest. And then you can also find her under pranicforest.com. I would highly recommend following her on Instagram. as She gives a lot of really Ooh. interesting information about herbs and, and how to use that uh, for your beauty, but also for your health. So, and I always love because I learn something about something new about plants every time I see your post. It's really <laughs> oh, great. Oh, that's wonderful, Allison. Yeah. Well, thank you, Maya and Allison, for having me. I'm so excited to. I'm always excited to share. I feel that that's become a large part of what I'm trying to do is sharing the information. And um, we are at that crossroads now of where the energy has shifted that we are being thrust into a new paradigm, which is bringing us closer again to earth medicine it's a reintegration of earth medicine whether it's for food nutrition beauty and health and we're just sort of reincorporating medicines of old and using them in new fascinating ways with new research added so we're finding out new things all the time which is really beginning to um, eliminate the need for a lot of toxins which is something that we've been heavily relying on especially for 30 years um, you know, as we've moved away closer, further, sorry, the earth, it is actually in recorded history in North America, the sickest that we've ever been. Um, so it's very interesting that although we have all these new pharmaceuticals and medications, we're actually quite ill as a society. Mm -hmm. So, um, going back to the earth for many different reasons for health is wonderful but also for the grounding we've become completely unglued and disconnected um the collective is very disconnected right now um you know for those of you know people turn tuning into the news they can see that uh we've never been further away from uh peace within ourselves within our own bodies and then within a collective as well so i'm playing a small role um it was natural for me to integrate it into beauty because that was where i started when i was 18. but actually my journey started long before that more in the forest in quebec and then through saskatchewan so always having something to do with herbs and nature in my world and not thinking that was cool and not enjoying it at that time, but looking back, realizing I was raised ideally for this type of work. Um, you know, lots of natural remedies as a child, um, natural food, food that was often grown. Um, I definitely began experimenting and feeling the call to not eat most meat when I was about 13, I'd say. Um, I'm 42 at this point. So I, I haven't had beef or pork since I was about 13 years old. That's not something I push on everybody, um, but it has been just part of my own journey. And it was completely a natural, just a natural phenomenon that occurred where I no longer wanted it, no longer uh, liked the smell of it, no longer wanted to eat it. Um, <clears throat> so I became uh, plant-based about 11 years ago. Uh, um, where I was still having dairy and for the last six or seven years I've not consumed dairy either so I am what people call vegan but um, I, I use that term loosely because the energetics of where that can go can be futile for people you know um, because it might denote that everyone else is eating wrong and that's not something I wish to do 
you know, I think that intuitively um, you're guided to what maybe your system needs. And I do believe some of that is factored in by the vibration of which you're vibrating at, especially at this time. You may need a more denser physical uh, flesh or something to hold you sort of down. And other people might feel that they, they just want to be on a juice fast for the rest of their life. <laughs> so I'm not the person to sort of tell them that they're wrong. Oh, I thank you for sharing that, Amanda. I really respect yeah. that. That that's <laughs> yeah. It's it's that's a it's a really uh, big subject to go into because so many people who are uh, you know eating a certain way or yes. telling other people to eat that way, and this is right. the only way. And it's uh, right. you know yeah. I think you're yeah. you're right about that. Everybody has to find their own way, you know. So. Absolutely. It, it actually becomes an imbalance in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, an imbalance of yang. You know, if you're constantly, you know, um, you know, putting that energy into like, you need to do what I'm doing, like that is really an imbalance within the person they're just projecting. So um, I'm fairly neutral when it comes to food. Um, that's been what I just have naturally wanted to consume. Um, Due to that, um, I, I became I became extremely hypersensitive to almost all chemicals, uh, cleaning chemicals, the smell of cleaning chemicals. Um, I had been a cosmetologist, so practicing hair and aesthetics for many many years, working with perms, colors, the whole bit. Um, just really wasn't bothered, didn't have sensitive skin, wasn't bothered by anything, but went through a period where I was rapidly awakening to the reality that we live in, um, becoming very sensitive to other people's energies, which had been fairly natural for me from day one anyway, but not, not to the degree that I went. I began having all sorts of interactions, which would be classified as higher density interactions, uh, different beings, angelics, um, you know, uh, light beings especially, and it completely changed the way I was able to eat. It was actually the day after I had had a massive um, interaction where I woke up and found a very large being standing beside my bed. It was the next day that I went to go and heat up chicken in a microwave, which I also no longer own a microwave. Um, <laughs> that, uh, the minute I placed the chicken in my mouth, I was, I was almost gagging. I was not able to eat it, and I never had it again. And I realized that there was some tie-in with that interaction that had happened the night before that, um, that had changed me. And there is no real manual for that, but I knew that I had been changed. And uh, so that was the last time I ever had chicken. Um, you know, I, I, there was many things that went that way. I found that uh, all the products that I was, you know, told were the very best, the finest. And I was just so lucky to have received a discount on these beauty products, you know, because I was a cosmetologist. Um, I realized that they were just full of chemicals, just absolutely like a giant freaking chemical mess that um, in no way would I be able to use anymore on my skin. And I began getting giant, large patches of eczema on my skin and, um, you know, really not, it just not enjoying it. So I did what a lot of people are doing right now and they just basically dumped out all of their cosmetics. I stopped wearing nail polish. I stopped coloring my hair and I had been a colorist. <laughs> so I still to this day no longer color my hair. And I, I gave sort of all of that up willingly. I just didn't want to do it anymore. Um, I didn't want to... Um, wear makeup anymore. Now, now I do just a little tiny bit. Um, but I certainly wanted to get as close back to everything that came from the earth that I could. Um, and I began stud studying um, herbalism. I was just going to study a little bit. I didn't know that I was going to complete like four years later and be basically receiving a master's in herbalism. I hadn't... Um, planned on that, nor had I planned on that for the aromatherapy, which I, I now hold the certificate in clinical aromatherapy. I just wanted to learn a little bit about it so I could make my own products. As that was going on, I was already a pranic healer and I worked with people's energies very closely for quite a few years already. And can we tell, can I tell yes. everybody like what a pranic healer is? Cause I, I feel like a lot of people are, they're like, what? Cause you know, my and yeah. I have practiced pranic healing as well. Right. We're certified pranic healers. And yeah. I've talked to people about this and they're like, what is that? It's, it's, yeah. it's becoming more popular, I think, but, uh, sure, or more right. well known, but I think it's still yeah. a lot of people don't know. Right. With pranic healing, uh, well, first of all, we'll just take the word prana. It's also in my, in my business name as well, you know, you know, uh, pranic forest. It's just another word for energy. It is a Sanskrit word for energy, just like chi would be the uh, Chinese word for energy, 
Ki being the, like I said, Reiki, which is a Japanese modality, is the Japanese name for um, energy. And of course, it's also referred to as life force energy. So pranic healing is energy healing. I don't believe, and I don't think that many people are of this mindset anymore, that our energy is separate from our body. Our body is just a dense physical representation of energy. But there are many, many layers to our energy bodies. So maybe if you perform a healing that's happening on an energy out here, it's going to translate into the physical body. Um, so that's essentially pranic healing. We're, we're, we're um, restoring the energy body, life force energy, and then the body is in turn basically healing uh, itself. People that practice um, pranic healing are natural channels for this energy. And actually every person on this planet is. But um, when you sort of declare your body a natural conduit for other people's well-being, whether that's passing information on to people, that is all still within the realm of healing. And so pranic healers are essentially conduits for other people to jumpstart their energy. We're not using our own life force energy, but we're simply channeling it into their bodies and into their realm. That's very much what I feel when I help people. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, it, although I don't technically do pranic healings on people so much anymore, but like, much like you said about sharing information, about helping people, placing my hand on people, I feel Absolutely. the energy transfer still, you know, so. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Right. And I'm glad you said that because that's something that people need to know. Um, there is a, a huge, you know, I hear people, they'll come to my studio, they'll say, what can you give me? I hate doctors. That is just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you're saying doctors say that to people or, you're, or no, people are expecting? No, like, people come in and say that. But the thing is, oh, is doctors are healers as well. You know, um, you know, even what you're doing, the spreading of information to the collective, that is a, a form of healing. Um, so, you know, um, so I think that all of that is needed. And, and what would we do without doctors? I think the people that are saying that need to consider that. We, we yeah. do need doctors. Um, I think it's important to look at um, pharmaceuticals as well and their overuse. I think that's really where the culprit is, the overuse and the overprescribing of pharmaceuticals for sometimes acute things or even long-term things, which is where you start to see uh, the kidneys not being able or the liver not being able to process that medication anymore. And, you know, when you sort of start to have your kidneys and liver, you know, having problems, you're now overheating your engine. So that can cause a, a myriad of other problems as well. So that's where I think people need to be looking is, you know, um, is there another way within reason that they can treat their sore throat or are they immediately not willing to give that a try immediately looking to you know um you know go to the you know pharmaceuticals for that or um because i've seen many natural remedies work on the flip side of that i've also seen people go well you know my child has had a fever for three days um i didn't want to take them to the hospital and i think that is just a huge mistake you know there has to be a reasonable um you know especially i think that's something that's really important to say right now because um so many people are um on that doorstep where what they've done is they've gone natural and that's wonderful but then they've sworn off any medicines conventional medicines when someone maybe their child is very sick and i think that that's something to look at where your ego is with that and where your intelligence is with that that you know it's great if you know how to use natural products but don't experiment with your four-year-old with a fever <laughs> yeah. you know yeah yeah definitely. i can i can agree with that there's definitely you got to find balance and you and oh. use use the medicine when or the pharmaceuticals when it when it's called for right That's and not overuse exactly. it for sure uh, was, maya do you have anything to to ask uh, yeah i was uh, wondering um you said you had a four-year uh, study of it and um what was the um, initiative that got you to look at it besides the right. stuff that you had talked about? Um, and where yeah. did you go? What was it that your experience that kept drawing you to keep going toward this sure. uh, four yeah. years? Yeah, well, actually, um, so normally the program would be about two years, but I was taking clients in between already and I was developing the line for Pranic Forest as well which you know took about that long it's sort of they were both sort of running neck and neck at that time 
and you know you do make one product you change that same product at least 10 times you know before you're ready uh for instance the level that the product has gone to now is that i'm actually now applying with health canada and i've done the lab tests on six of the products and whatnot to get um you know, licensing, where uh, they're looking at the uh, safe amount, they're making sure that I don't have heavy metals in my products, those types of things, um, you know, and that they're safe for everyone. So that's that's the, the step I'm going through right now. And I, I think that's a nice, important step for where I wanted to go with that. With the herbalism, um, you know, I, ha I just kept seeing, <laughs> you know, things that, um, you know, maybe would have needed medication or, or whatnot. And that coupled with the energy of it, I just kept seeing basically in our household, and I have many children, um, I just kept seeing basically cure after cure after cure. The largest one that, uh, and I know that's a word we're not supposed to say, but I, I was seeing it in my own home and so I'm comfortable saying that. The largest one that really changed me where, where I think I could have just done with a few herbal courses and been happy what really changed my mind to keep going was I did have a, a very lovely woman who was cancerous for her second time. And after working with her energetically, and it was distance healing, I should mention, and, um, and with herbs, um, she is still to this day cancer free. So um, being allowed to witness and play a role in that of watching this woman heal her body was so huge there's just no turning back after that. Once you've seen, you know, cancer go, then, then it, yeah, I think you're kind of hooked and you want to know more and, uh, and you'd like to understand it more. And so I kept going with that. I recently submitted my final paper, which was a thesis and herbal monograph on Monotropa uniflora. And um, I put a lot of work into that and I, I definitely felt like that was a completion of one phase, but still, I would spend probably the rest of my life looking at herbs and looking at their compounds and their medicines and, and then also their um, spiritual values as well. Um, I've definitely had that uh, plant spirit communication happen more than once with different plants where I've either heard their frequencies or I've actually had a telepathic communication or um, can feel their energies or sometimes see the energies of a leaf that are not normally visible um, on, on this third dimensional sphere that uh, like how we're seeing like there's many more colors available to us that our mind is not uh, processing or yeah and that's something that's definitely talked about in herbalism the relationship you have with the plants I hear totally. that a lot right. yeah and yeah. you, you find what works what you want to work with right it yeah. kind of comes to you with, with and the, then with actually that. what changed with that even was um, also the sustainability of it but then also who was making it. Like I felt it very important for me to be overseeing what was going in it. I made conscious decisions too, to um, remove um, glycerin and um, palm oil from all of my products. When I saw what was happening around the globe, like I, and I, I just wasn't able to do that. Um, I absolutely could not put glycerin or palm oil in any of my products after that. Um, you know, the palm oil industry is just decimating a very needed, much needed rainforest on this planet and uh, people don't even know about it. So it's, so um, definitely need to look at things. Uh, even with shea butter, I'm using an unrefined, organic, sustainable, non-slave labor shea butter. Um, shea butter is derived from a nut. Um, and I don't know if many people are aware of this, but women in Africa are hand processing this nut with like a stone sometimes and oh, really, right. have, yeah, it's a huge amount of work and we're just sort of burning through shea butter. And I guess I'm just asking people to be conscious, even of these natural products, what's gone into, what's gone into them and, and, um, is there slave labor involved? I mean, there's a lot of slavery on this planet, whether it's cacao uh, my daughter actually owns an ethical bean to bar, and that's a huge. She's really shone a huge light on the slave labor involved with chocolate, and, but mm -hmm. that can apply to uh, to coffee, to shea butter, to kukui nuts. Like it's really, you know, um, there's many different things you need to look at when you're using uh, organic products. Many things are crafted under the guise of fair trade that are absolutely not fair at all. So oh, it's okay. just really important to as much light of consciousness that you can put on any one material especially raw materials for anybody out there that's doing their own crafting it's very important 
So one of the things I've uh, I've heard is that vitamin E can't be um, pure enough anymore. They used to make it pure, and uh, yeah. now it's being used with soy. So you get these soy products. Do you have a hard time finding you know, pure E or what? You know you what? Yeah, with the vitamin E, my focus has more been on the vitamin A and the retinol, and because it's more of a, it's usually derived from animal animal proteins. So I, I've kind of been really shining the light lately on vitamin A and where that's coming from. But, you know, you're raising a great point. With vitamin E, there's other ways to get a lot of vitamin E. Um, you can look at something like um, sweet almond oil. Okay. That is full of vitamin E. Many of these well, oils just actually have The thing we try to avoid, Amanda, is the polyunsaturated fatty acids, which come from a yeah. lot of nuts and seeds. So seeds and nut oils, you know, uh, which we, some of the research Maya and I have done uh, that if you can get uh, the true vitamin E, it can be a little bit more healing for the body than like um, a more of yeah. a polyunsaturated fat. And I that's why we ask. Is I, I think actually would oil. love to know where you could find pure vitamin E anymore because I just yeah. don't think it's like out there. Um, no, you're, and you're right. Like that, and that's just it. Actually, that, and then I'd also like to shine the light on rosehip seed oil. I am getting a beautiful rosehip seed oil, but. I don't, and that also argan oil, I don't throw that in everything because it's being so overused and over cultivated that you're going to have a hard time getting, you know, really pure. And as a result, um, searching out for some of these really, really pure forms, mm -hmm. the cost generated, like right. for what I'm putting out for even essential oils now is, is if people could see <laughs> what, about what that costs. What you about know, coconut oil? Do you use a lot of coconut oil in your products? Yeah, coconut oil, so the MCT oil, so um, I'm using like a food grade, so a lot of the herbs that I would um, grow or wild harvest or wild craft um, are then being infused into coconut oil. Um, that seemed to be the best choice, better than an olive oil. Yeah. One, uh, a fractionated coconut oil, which is basically an MCT oil where it's not going um, solid again because uh, it's had its bonds you know, broken, uh, not by chemical, but by a heat reaction. Um, that was sort of like, you're going to have to choose something if you're doing these oils. And that was the best choice for me. So better than a palm oil or an olive oil, you know, you have to sort of pick the, but I think, again, I would say to people like, you know, really what the mindful beauty is, um, you know, uh, don't not to be wasteful. You don't need as much. And, right. you know, yeah. And so just really, um, I found something, um, a new word has entered my beauty rituals really. And it's about like precious, precious oils. Like, you know, um, even when I'm getting a raw material and it's, you know, being sent to me, it, like, it is just, it feels precious in my hands that like, you know, you know, three rail cars went into making this rose oil. I have a, a very, very pure Turkish rose auto on its way right now. And, um, that is just going to be so highly, highly coveted. I mean, I think it's somewhere floating around retail at about $5 a drop. And it's something wow. that I just really covet because it's so special and it took many, many roses, which a beautiful high vibration to make that oil. So I think adding that mindfulness, I mean, it would be the difference between you see many people buy fast food and you see them waste it and throw it out like they don't finish it. But I don't think you'd see many people not try to finish a steak and potato meal, let's say, for instance, or something that, you know, was, uh, that costs a lot of money. I think that um, just adding that mindfulness to beauty as well is important, like not to be wasteful with anything. Can and there are other ways, you know. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you're growing your own herbs and what you're doing in the, because um, your yeah. website shows this beautiful, um, looks like a yes. greenery and stuff. So maybe talk yeah. about where that's going for you and how Absolutely. that works. So that's happening between both provinces. So I have, um, I live uh, just outside of Calgary. Calgary is a, a large city. I know a lot of your viewers are going to be in the U.S. So I'm just north of you in Alberta and I'm in the Rocky Mountains. So I live just outside of a city of, you know, I think 1.2 million people. Um, and I'm on a few acres. So on my acreage, you know, in Alberta, I can grow some things. It's not like where you are on the West Coast. Um, the things are going to grow a lot easier where you are. So I'm trying to work with native plants that grow well here. So um, some of us are, some of our indigenous species, you know, I can just go out and wildcraft, but I also have a greenhouse on my property. I grow my own roses. 
And so they're highly fragrant. Uh, I have some rugosas. I have some more than blush roses. So the hydrosols that I make, um, you know, which can be used in place of skin toner, and then they're alcohol free. Um, I wish we had smell o vision because it's it's really <laughs> so beautiful. But what this is is this is a hydrosol. So um, to give you an example, this is made with Okanagan French lavender. Which I am growing, but I'm also getting from a small local organic farm in the Okanagan, and uh, I've seen French lavender growing on Salt Spring Island as well. So it likes that uh, um, that atmosphere. It does not like Eastern Canada. It's too cold in the winter, even though it's hot and humid in the summer. So they can grow the English lavender, which is beautiful, but the French lavender is extremely fragrant and produces the most essential oil. Um, so. Uh, what you're seeing when you look at my website or you see pictures on Instagram, you're seeing me spending my summers out on the Okanagan and uh, you know growing a bunch of plants. I have a lakefront property that's uh, you know a double lot, so I'm growing quite a few plants there. I'm wild crafting um, out in the mountains as well, and then you're also seeing pictures from my acreage in Alberta and then some wild crafting that goes on in Alberta. Right. So actually, what's happened is that there's quite a few things that I'm able to um, grow and wildcraft. Um, so when I'm making anything that has like a calendula oil in it, the calendula flowers, I've grown those, and then I've infused them into an MCT oil. So uh, that's one example. Another one would be arnica. Um, now out here. Uh, not too far away from me, I'm able to get arnica um, with the heart-shaped, ar the heart-leafed arnica. That's pretty common out here. At a little bit higher elevations, when I'm up in the Monashies, I'm able to start seeing um, arnica montana, which is a different species of arnica. I mean, of course, they're both, you know, huge anti-inflammatories. Um, I grow all my own um, comfrey. Uh, roses. Um, I do grow hibiscus, but I'm usually buying hibiscus to distill. Um, I do grow sweet grass. Um, I grow my own hyssop, um, catnip, Japanese catnip, tobacco. Um, let's see here. What about um, mushrooms? I mean, yeah. Are you doing mushrooms? Do you do mushrooms? So mushrooms is a different science. So mushrooms is, okay. you know, mycology. So with herbalism, you are studying some mushrooms, but really to get like, to, for me to really get a firm, firm grip on uh, mushrooms, uh, that's like a whole different study almost. But uh, medicinally, I've obviously studied turkey tail, shaga, reishi, um, you know, the, you know, all the main, main mushrooms. When it does come to, um, however, uh, when it comes to things like usnea, that's quite different. So that's when you're in the forest and you're seeing the old man's beard, mm. uh, you know, growing down. Yeah. So um, usnea, scrobata. Like lion's uh, have... mane and chicken near the woods. Is... No, nope, that, that one's a mushroom. But if you look up and you see, um, um, you know, the, the beards hanging down from the conifer trees when you're hiking. Like no, the we long... don't have a lot of conifers where I live, but that's, the, uh... she's in Atlanta, but uh, <laughs> for oh, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. so you would see, okay, yeah. so, yeah, so you would, yeah, so maybe it sort of stops down along there, but um, basically that's been studied and looked at for tuberculosis, it's highly antifungal, um, so I do collect my own usnea off the trees, nice. um, they are like the lungs of the forest, um, they will not grow right at the city limits because they really like the pure, very, very pure air, um, so I consider them to be of just really, really high um uh, intelligence and and they are a cross between an algae and a fungus so they're a lichen okay. and uh, they're just mm, beautiful great. so the, that the, makes do a they show a lot of color because a lot of lichens have a, like a, di a a fluorescent or you know like they have go different to different pastel colors they're kind of an interesting you know, green these, or something these they, are yeah there's like be... on the rocks they grow on uh, when we were in Mexico yeah. they have light green right. yellow orange oh, yeah. and they're yeah. very much looking like they're part of the rock it's amazing yeah no these ones are dangling and hanging and oftentimes they're called you know old man's beard um and they sort of look like a wiry beard and they can be anywhere from a sagey light green a little bit more of a minty green to a dark blackish brown um some of them on the pacific northwest side i probably wouldn't collect because there are some species that would contain uh, vulpuric acid 
Yeah, so, I remember you were saying that. I had asked yes. that question. <laughs> I think I mentioned that before, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so, Amanda, you said that you were born for the born to do this, and in some aspect of what you said, are you Native yes. American? Do you have some indigenous in you that kind of came yeah. through, yeah. like ancestry wise? Do you have like a yes. great grandmother or someone that you know did this, yeah. or what was your inspiration yeah. in that way? Yes. Okay. Well, actually, my family is very that they operate very close to the earth. Like that, my my extended family that's in Quebec. I mean, these are people that were recycling long before it was cool. Um, you know, making herbal remedies in the woods. My aunt is very into herbs. My mom is very interested in herbs and flowers and was a huge gardener. My grandmother is also a psychic medium. She's turning a hundred um, wow. in a few days. Wow. <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you my heritage. So on that side, um, that's a huge, uh, Irish area of Quebec to be Irish and Scottish. So my mother is Irish and Dutch and there was some French in there as well. Um, but, uh, my father is Costa Rican. I have had my, um, DNA done though. And, um, he's Costa Rican, but they were really bringing quite a few, the Spaniards brought quite a few slaves from Mali across the Caribbean and into Latin America. And that's definitely part of my heritage. So mm -hmm. I do have, um, you know, African heritage, Hispanic, um, but I have like the Spain, Portugal, um, I'm also 10% Chinese wow. and uh, I also have some indigenous peoples in me as well. It's a smaller percentage than the Chinese, but I'm also, you know, what they would say Native American as well. So I have, um, I have sort of all the cultures kind of going on and all of these people have worked with herbs. Um, you know, so it's, I feel like it is sort of just in me to do that, but I also felt just a strong calling to do that. Um, I, I definitely feel that um, we've just gotten too far away from working with the earth. We've become very ungrounded, always acting as though we're sort of walking on this thing when we're actually part of something. Mm. And um, by looking at it that way, it changes everything. It will change your relationship with the planet that you're on, how you eat, um, and you start to look at the life cycle differently. You know, look at the sun, which is growing the food, which you're eating, and then you are, you know, bringing it back to your body and then back into the earth, there's a huge recycling. If you're full of toxins and bring that out, you're now you know, quite toxic to the planet and that the planet is sick and the people are sick and we all need to do our part beyond recycling to bring that back. And maybe that's all of us, each of us being mindful of what our beauty practices are, what we're eating, what our waste is, um, and then you know, it's all gung-ho to you know, practice herbalism and start, you know, but then are you sustainably even being able to grow it? So the, the the last step for me, I shouldn't say the last step, but the next step in the next five years is uh, uh, we're wanting to actually purchase land on Salt Spring Island. And even though we might be Calgary based, that's where we're gonna be wanting to grow a lot of our um, herbs and whatnot that we're using. Mm. Um, that's sort of a dream yeah, that's and that's cool. something that'll probably be realized. Uh, I've chose that even over the Okanagan because it's much more temperate on the coast and the Okanagan <laughs> is so intense hot that uh, you're having to use a lot of water and we can often succumb to forest fires and drought and you know all those things that kind of go on um, where it's very very hot and dry <laughs> so yeah. um, uh, Salt Spring doesn't have as much of a desert like climate um, I, it's just much more temperate and um, it's just lovely on the coast so that's that's yeah. sort of a future endeavor um, they're also able to grow some eucalyptus on the coast, which is really, I find that very interesting. I was so intrigued when I was seeing eucalyptus trees. I thought they were bleached or butis trees I, or painted or something. And then I realized they were growing eucalyptus, passiflora, and some other varieties. So I was so intrigued by that. So yeah. that's, I mean, that's medicine. Amazing. Yeah. We, within every five steps you could possibly take, you are just surrounded by medicines, herbal medicines, And, um, you know, and even on a spiritual level, you're taking that up to your body. I would just encourage anybody, even if they don't want to go and get a master's in herbalism, to start appreciating the world around them a little bit more and taking a closer look. That's really going to start to feed their soul. People are looking for that. I hear that all the time. Yeah. So that's with, going with appreciation, I, I agree with that because that is a huge uh, component of healing. It's a huge component yes. to beauty. Yes. Uh, 
you know, and, and going to going into the beauty aspect of it, you know, um, whole aspect of, uh, you know, how you think about yourself, your self-worth, your value, your uh, self-esteem. It all it all relates to beauty as well as healing. And um, yeah, so I, I think you're right. Appreciation is a good place to start with that. Sure. Um, absolutely. Just observing, appreciating. I mean, nature is interacting with you, whether you're hearing it or not. And I think just beginning to take some of that in just beautifies the whole process of life. Um, I, I wanted to take a second run at the beauty industry, but doing it completely different. And it, it, it just felt very badass that I was like deconstructing the facial, um, or, you know, and just turning it into this whole different organism. And uh, it, it I apparently was very attractive to people because I, I, you know, I was getting clients, you know, that were so intrigued by what I was doing and, you know, saying their skin had never felt better. And so it made me want to continue. Um, I then incorporated a very interesting healing modality that is an acupressure multi-reflexology for the face. With it are several tools and it's just, it's just dynamite. It is such a great, I'm so, uh, I waited a year for the trainer to come out from Spain to train us, and it was just fantastic. I would love to show you some diagrams and posters of what sure. people don't even know is in their face. Yeah, I've heard about this facial, and I would, I would I've been wanting to come out and get one. Oh, I would love <laughs> for you to come out. You coached me over um, energetically. You've done some energy healing sessions with me before, yes. which have been amazing. But I would always, and you I know, and then you also offer these awesome workshops too. So. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely show us oh, that. Yeah, the, yeah. I've, I've just been having fun with this. I, you know, I'm at a point. I think when you when you get into even your later 30s, maybe mid 30s, and if there's people out there that are 25 and in their power, that's great. I was not one of those people. It took me a little longer to really feel confident and be in my power. And I'd say 42, which is the age I'm at now, really outlined for that. I, like I will not do a single thing that I don't want to do. I will not participate in cruelty and unkindness. Like I just won't do anything I don't want to do at this point. I feel very empowered to just march to the beat of my own drum. And uh, that I think is sort of what I'm doing and it seems to be working out. <laughs> cool. That's, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So this is a comet yeah. detector right here, if you can see this. So we have sort of one huh. point, it's a dull point, and then a three prong on the end. I love this just for going even across the forehead. And what's and, it called? Uh, what's it called? This is called Comet Detector. Comet. Yeah, Comet. so I have a sharper detector right here that is really used. Uh, this is more of a practitioner's tool. What is so it called? So basically, uh, um, this one is just a detector. Oh, detector. Okay. Uh, and so it's quite pointed, rounded on this end. Uh, now, these are not vegan tools, I should point out. Um, they are found horn. They are made in Vietnam, and this modality was born out of the Vietnam War. Actually, I should mention that as well. Really? It's, it's, it, yeah, it's got an amazing history to it. Um, just amazing. The story is quite long, but it is a, that's a, another visit. Um, you know, it would be great. What's, because, the whole, uh, what's the whole process called? What do you... Uh... Yeah, this is called Dine Chan. Dine so Chan. Dine Chan is Vietnamese for acupressure. Dine Cham is Vietnamese for acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And um, this was created by an acupuncturist. So basically, uh, if I'm looking at uh, point 34, which is I've got two points right above the eyebrows, okay? You could take your fingers even and let your head rest into those areas. And that's gonna bring your chi down. It's gonna calm your body down, calm your spirit down and get the you know chi to descend in your body. So here. So, yeah. Yes, right above the crooks okay. of your eyebrows right here and just really add pressure. If okay. I was doing it in the studio, I might give you a poke right here and hold that for, you know, a few moments. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not extremely painful. Uh, but there are other ways over time that I had learned to access, you know, um, other points. <laughs> and I was applying them to this modality and they also worked. So this is a pranic healing laser crystal. It does have uh, 14 karat gold in the end here. So I can just channel through this crystal to those points as well, and you'll begin to start. I channel through the top of my head, and it just begins to kind of go in, and you can start to feel that as well. Um, but another thing you can do is crystal massage. With um, These are massage sticks. This is lapis lazuli. This is rose quartz. Rose quartz is amazing for the skin. And so you can begin to, you know, they're nice and cool, and push your facial oil. I even like to heat them. So there's different things that I'm doing to maintain the integrity of skin, 
but I'm also working on the reflex zones for the rest of my body when I'm doing that. A popular facial tool that people like to purchase from me is this one here. So it has a oh, yang I've side. seen that one. Yeah. Yeah, right? This one here is the yin side. So when I, I actually keep mine in the car. So when I'm driving, I just go ahead if I'm at a stoplight and I'm like waking up the entire face by doing this. Right here, I'm working digestive area. Uh -huh. So right it's about here. texture, uh, kind of giving your face different uh, pressure does. with different textures is kind of That's what it sounds right. like. So you're, yeah. you're effectively, even though you're you're actually making your skin, you know, you're producing collagen naturally by heating this up and doing this. Oh, this looks like friction. Okay. So, um, you know, you can do this around the sides of the eyes, the forehead, but then also being mindful that you're treating kidneys, you know, you're relaxing yourself, spine, you know, lung area on both sides, liver, stomach, spleen, digestion, bladder, you know, so you can really, but you'll notice, I mean, people that are using them, um, they really start to decrease wrinkles and things like that. And um, I, that is absolutely the case. Um, here's another tool. This is a concave roller. So we've got a brass ball here. This is great for uh, people that get um, bags under their eyes. This is wonderful because it's always nice and cold. But also this is uh, the right breast, the eyelid here, but it's also the right, um, uh, uh, tube, the fallopian tube as well. Hmm. So, you know, you can really, uh, you know, begin wow. to, uh, but you're not pressing that. real hard on that. Are you? On oh, your eyelid? You never need to injure yourself. Like just, it's yeah. very light, you know, yeah. this one. And this is also the, the greatest of the finger tools. So you can sit there doing all of your fingers. That looks like running it along really the spine area, which is just like the inside of your foot. It's the spine. But for people that have poor digestion, you could take the ball and we start to work the digestive area on your palm. So do yeah, you do so feet, feet reflexology too then, or you kind of- I do, I, I am certified in the first part of foot reflexology. So I end all my sessions with that because I'm usually using so much energy and channeling so much through the top of the head that um, by then connecting with the feet, I'm bringing people's energy down a little bit so that they're not, um, in the beginning when I first started doing this, I was channeling so much prana that what was happening, if I didn't bring it down, uh, they were not sleeping for three nights. They were getting migraines because uh, it was so much prana up here. Yeah. So now so I'm have trying you done to down. cupping too in the facial cupping? Actually, I had an opportunity to study facial cupping uh, this year and I missed it oh. because I was doing some other things. But there's not a lot of time left in my sessions because I also now do um, uh, ozone facials as well. Mm -hmm. So I added the ozone in. So I had to make a decision between adding in the ozone or the cup. Is that a laser? Is that like a laser or it's something? No, it's actually a, yes, oh, pure okay. oxygen. So, you okay. know, it's, it's great. It's a great therapy. And I'm using it just for the face. I have a friend who actually has full ozone tanks that you can go and get in. And they're very therapeutic, great for infection, the whole bit, injuries. Yeah, wonderful. Have you, wonderful. have you, is that, would that be, you? so it's just oxygen, you're saying, like an oxygen. Yes, ozone, it's oxygen okay. with the extra molecule Have you learn much about uh, carbon dioxide, Amanda, and how that can also affect uh, uh, the skin and, and the... No, well, you know, a lot of the oils that I'm using and even the essential oils are, you know, free radical scavengers. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that, you know, definitely, you know, it's also our environment, right? That, that definitely attacks our skin. It's things coming from the outside out, trying to get out that are toxins, but then we're, we're in a very polluted environment. But one of the things I find is if you really start to learn how to bring prana into your body, I almost feel like not to get too stuck on how polluted our world is. That, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, we're here to sort of channel more energy into it and maybe we can start to break away from some of those ways. I mean, we're now seeing, um, you know, Tesla. I mean, I mean that, yeah. that's huge right and, and yeah. there's, there's more to come more well there's come. also a trust in your body too right there's that right. that point where you have to trust that yeah. your body can do the job and that's not right. totally depend on so many other things you know that's right but, like yeah. I think digestive enzymes are great but if you're constantly taking that maybe you stop producing enzymes so it's it's that type of uh -huh. idea as well totally right. yeah. supple over supplementation and that kind yes. of thing yeah yeah and even with a modality like this we kind of go about 80 percent but then we leave a 20% for the body to sort of rise to that, right? So that the body has a job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, this is a really great. You know, I have definitely used this detector tool on an area where somebody is maybe on a lot of medication or is perhaps a heavy drinker. And all I have to do is lightly nick it and they will hit the ceiling. It's amazing how you discover that you have reflex zones that are very, like kidneys are always really sore on people. You start to really see where they're um, exhausting their bodies just by going like this in their face. They'll go, oh my God, that really hurt. And then you'll say, well, are you, you know, and you'll find this, the story in the pattern almost immediately. Right. Yeah, almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's, cool. that's a beautiful modality. And I, I, you know, that's really great. Another um, thing that if I could really, you know, teach people to do would be oil cleansing. So this is my oil cleansing ritual. Um, it's the Veda oil. And it's, you know, made up of sweet almond oil, calendula oil, pomegranate seed oil. Um, and all I do is I take a very small amount, again, being mindful not to waste it. Like these are precious oils and the earth had to make them. It's not a chemical that you can just pull out of thin air and, 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 and make, you know, it's, there's a growing process and a process behind it. So just using a small amount, you know, you would get your face, your neck, and then you would get your water as hot as you could possibly get it because you could never just rinse it off with water alone. You'd have to use a cloth, get it very hot and hold it. And I like to wipe. I mean, some people don't like to wipe. They just like to pat. I like to do a little bit of a scrub. And so that's something that I have been doing for years every day. It's it's amazing for the skin. Oil so cleansing. You don't use alcohol to get the oils off because of the face? Is that why you choose water? Yeah. So no, no alcohols. Yeah, no alcohols at all um, because they're so drying, especially yeah. where I'm located. I'm in, a, I'm in the tundra, <laughs> like a much drier, colder, you know, our winters are right. very cold. Um, I ski. So, I mean, all of those things, you know, you've got the wind, you've got the harshness, you know, coming down um, our skin. One of the biggest complaints in Calgary is people have very dry skin, especially as we start to shift seasons. Okay. So um, we don't have the humidity that you would have on the um, coast. And of course, you know, you're going to have extreme humidity. Uh, isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. You, you come here and yeah. like crack like a pine cabinet. Like it is extremely Oh, right. I, I know. I came to when I came to Portland it felt so dry compared to where yes. I used to and live then, in Atlanta. Of course you would feel that even more so in Alberta. It's Alberta. extremely dry. Yeah. yeah. Extremely yeah. dry. So um basically well, uh mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, we're going. We're coming up on the hour. I don't know oh, how yes. much time you have, Amanda. I just want to let you let you know that. Absolutely. And, the, and I don't know if you want to get into the sound part real quick. Yes, or, I do. Uh, okay. Um, one of the things uh, many years ago, my husband visited a a really great acupuncturist here in Alberta, and it was years ago. I mean, I was into all this stuff, but you know, I've been this way my whole life, but this was quite different. This was, you know, this was acupuncture and I was very interested and intrigued and, you know, he had gone to do some sessions for a back injury um, and this is years ago. Uh, when we got there, the man said to me, oh, your chi is very good. It's very strong chi, you know, and I said, well, thank you. I said, I take a B vitamin and it was so funny that I said that because he looked at me like, and he said, he goes, this, not the same thing. You know, and uh, he really <laughs> wanted me to know, like, this was not the same thing at all. Like, we're speaking different languages here, literally different languages. And um, I now have come to realize what he was trying to say is that energy and prana, there is no supplement for that. It's light. And maybe the frequency of the green that you're eating is a beautiful high frequency that's very cleansing. And our eyes just interpret that frequency as being green. Blue is very calming, and there's many things that denote blue, and, you know, antioxidants often are blue, have blue skin, the flavonoids of blue skin, black skin, red skin, berries, and mushrooms, and things like that, all interact with the jing of the body and bringing the energy up, which is, you know, an antioxidant, right? So, um, I, uh, I, as I began to delve into frequency more and more, there was inaudible frequency, which was using crystals on the body, and that was part of pranic healing. And then I got more and more delving into um, the frequency of um, how much that can move energy. I mean, I would see it in the studio. I'd seen, I've seen, I've seen everything in the studio from, um, you know, really, like I've really seen it all. I, and and I sh I'm sure just because I said that, I'm going to see something tomorrow like I've never seen before. <laughs> I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> but I definitely have seen all kinds of things. So um, what I have in front of me here are alchemy crystal bowls. 
These are very, very special balls. These balls are like 98.8% pure quartz crystal fired with precious, precious metals. Um, they're, I'm so lucky to be able to pick these up at Amaryllis, at Amaryllis Crystal Gardens in Banff. I think the next retailer of these might be somewhere on the coast. Um, they are like rare and precious and they emit a sound that goes through every cell in your body. Um, something I started realizing as a channeler, because I started doing it every day, I started to get um, light under my skin that I could see. I don't think other people could see it, but they'd always tell me I was glowing. And um, I realized it was because I was channeling prana in through my head and it was, of course, passing through my face. That was something that my main trainer that moved back to India, Syed, uh, he was a doctor, and that was something he told me. He said, you'll begin to look younger because the prana will do that to your skin. And I, I can say that years later, it does it does begin to do that. Um, I wanted to close today with a um, quick technique, uh, two minutes to bring prana into your body. Um, but while I'm doing it, I wanted to play the alchemy crystal bowls as well. So Perfect. that'd be uh, awesome. Yeah, you all started. Okay, so um, I've got a nice indigo bowl here. This resonates um, to the heart chakra and almost at the throat. Will you tell, got, will you tell the uh, listeners what they should be doing to prepare for what you're going about to do? Absolutely. So what I'm going to have um, them do is I'm going to do this with breath. I'm going to bring in three say if you're, if you're in a car listening to this, you might not want to yeah, <laughs> try this. Totally turn, tune into it. But if you're at home, go ahead. Go we naturally it. meditate while we drive because we channel and we zone out. I mean, that's what's happening. But don't do it deliberately. Yes, that, that's right, exactly. Um, so uh, the next bowl, um, so before we, uh, before we start, I'll sort of walk it through it. Um, this is a, an e-bowl. This is a, this is like the world needs this one, the third dimension, the solar plexus. By the way, I'd like to also just mention that we're moving out of that solar plexus into the heart chakra where we're all going to be expressing differently. You can't take your luggage from the third dimension up to the heart, to the fourth dimension. So the panic you see globally right now is us moving as a collective. So hopefully that gets sorted out soon and everyone likes a new apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rise. I like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is a shoe guide bowl, very good at clearing energy. And it resonates to the root chakra. And then, of course, on a channel, I had to have a channeling bowl. So this is a few inches above the crown chakra, above the head. It has a very, very high sound. It's a very difficult bowl to play because it's quite tall and tippy. And this is aqua aura quartz. That's where that beautiful blue color is, um, fired with iron. And that's how it's getting this color. Amanda, so these are very why, why is some of them, why do some of them have a, 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 a holder up? I guess do you hold it up yeah. or down. This or... one is great. You can actually play this one and uh, walk oh, okay. right over people's uh, bodies with it. Oh. And they'll be to feel their body pulsating and whatnot. Just, I'll just play the deep sound of this one. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna start playing the bowls. What I'm gonna ask people to be doing is let's do a six count breath. So let's breathe in. And when you're breathing in, I want you to breathe in the universe through the top of your head. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and hold it sort of at your third eye. And then I'm gonna get you to, again to six, pushing it down right through the top of your head and sort of let it really illuminate your face and then let it pull down your spine and go right through down the side of your leg, back through your bottoms of your feet into the earth. So, so we're just gonna be channeling Should through. we be doing this with our hands and our arms or? You know, you certainly can. In Qigong, we do an exercise like this where we hold it there. So if you want to hold it there for six seconds and then move it down for six seconds and collect it, and hold for six seconds, and then move it down for six seconds. And we can do that and sort of pull the chi, the, chi, the prana, the life force energy, the key through the top of your head, all the way down through your spine, through the bottoms of your feet back into the earth, and just keep recycling it that way. We can do that for just, even if we just carry on for about two minutes with that, 
you're okay. going to definitely feel it. It's going to give you a little bit of a recharge. You'll feel very grounded. And, um, and then, you know, if we had to throw ego into it, I would say it does give you beautiful skin just to practice this small little reset. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to get started and I'll be playing the bowls. And, um, so as we'll, well, I'm going to keep an eye on the time here and we'll just keep doing that. So as I just want people breathing in through the top of their head. Okay. And I also want them to breathe in gold. If we could do an electric white gold. Okay. That goes through the top. Okay, because that's a frequency. We're seeing it as gold, but that's a very high, high cosmic frequency. And, and so. they should be breathing it, through their nose or what? what? Yeah, but, but you, yeah, you breathe it through your nose, but visualize that it's coming down through the top of your head. Yeah, so that there's something opening up in the top of your head and you're breathing it in, you know, like that. Okay? okay. okay eyes so closed got, or eyes open? Yeah. You can close your eyes if you like or have them open. And you'll just, you'll, you'll hear the frequency of the bowls as well. So, okay. okay. So I'm just setting these up a little bit here. I'm going to be, uh, you know, moving around them a little bit. Okay. And if you're ready, we can just kind of go for that. Yeah, we're ready. you yeah thank you wonderful. wow Thanks. yeah sound is powerful the sound of crystal is very powerful but the sound of your own voice is very powerful so we just need to uh especially right now um be mindful mindful with our beauty rituals with where we are um emotionally and really do a lot of self-talk right now and to accept the body that we have um, chose to incarnate into and add a nice high vibration to our body through beauty, through food, through what we feed our mind with, um, how much television are we watching, um, how much hatred are we practicing, um, all of those things. All of those things are part of fifth dimensional beauty. 
and I hope it continues that way. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, um, especially because you. you're giving the, the same kind of theory that we feel is everyone, um, whoever gives themselves the um, option to let themselves accept themselves that they are right now, here and now, the more you're able to accept and everything in your whole world. And it's more of not con uh, conforming into beauty of the establishment or beauty of someone else's opinion. It's about you establishing your own beauty for what you believe. Right. And yeah, and just realizing that what we feel in our own selves echoes through the collective, whether we're in Canada, whether we're in the United States, whether we're in Brazil, whether we're in, you know, North Korea. I mean, whether anywhere on the planet, we are connected to everything. Everything's happening in our, when it, within us, and we need to be at peace with ourselves before we can be at peace with the rest of the planet. And I'm just encouraging people to really do that right now. We really need it. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, Amanda. And Thank you. So you guys, uh, yeah, and, and so Jeff, definitely I'll say again, check Amanda out um, at pranicforest.com, also on Instagram at uh, pranicforest. And is there any way, is there any other way you'd like for people to get in touch with you, Amanda, or the best way? Those are the main ways. Um, you know, I definitely can do, if you are watching this and you're not in Calgary, um, I do do Skype sessions. That's actually how I met Allison. And yes. So <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I can do those, and those are a great sort of reset. Um, I can't do a facial that way, but I can also help you with, um, you know, a custom facial oil. I can do that over. We can talk about your skin long distance. I've even um, done sessions in Iran. <laughs> Oh, so, wow. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, um, I want to say that I definitely I found you on Instagram and um, and it was I, I you're like my ins kind of part of my inspiration for getting with Maya and starting the show because I was really looking to uh, to use my voice to help people. So um, and it's been oh, really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Oh, healers are coming out right now. That's the greatest thing. As we watch, you know, if you take the perception and the perspective that everything, the collective is really falling apart and everything's, you know, awry, what we are seeing is the, the major pull and people that are watching this that are in this zone are going to know exactly what I'm speaking of. Like, you feel that you're like, I, I need to use my gifts. This is the time. The time is now. The, you know, it's like yeah. a switch has been turned on for all of us. And, uh, that, you know, everyone has a reason for, that, that they're here. Uh, and yeah. everyone is just as important as the next person. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really encouraging people to, um, uh, you know, whether it's any form of hatred, whether it's self-hatred, whether it's choosing sides on the news, which isn't really the news, which isn't, you know, really um, use your own moral compass to just sort of stay neutral and try to stay within your power and just choose love over everything else. Choose the highest vibration for any situation that's coming at you right now. We are being challenged. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, challenged. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks, Amanda. And Thank uh, so I'll definitely much. be in touch and uh, schedule Absolutely. another session with you soon. Yeah. This is so much fun. Thank <laughs> you both so much. <laughs> nice to meet and you. It was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. Amanda. Have a wonderful Bye -bye. day. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.